name's Stephanie Mason, and I'm in clinical development at Sarepta Therapeutics. I'm a senior medical director and the clinical development lead for all of our Duchenne muscular dystrophy products, which includes the recently approved Elevitus product. Sarepta has long been involved in the treatment of Duchenne and has a number of products under accelerated approval and now also this gene therapy under traditional approval uh, with the FDA. And we're very excited to expand the populations for all of these therapies. So DMD is a really exciting place right now. It's a devastating disease and one that is life shortening for the patients who have it. Uh, these are boys that have symptoms in terms of elevate, elevated muscle damage markers, even in utero, uh, that develop slower and fewer motor skills than their healthy peers, and progressively then lose those motor skills, end up in a wheelchair and ultimately lose the ability to uh, go to the bathroom independently, feed themselves independently, and frequently die of cardiorespiratory reasons in their 30s on average. So it's a devastating disease. But recently, this has become a very exciting time for clinicians in DMD because there are more and more therapies in clinical trials and in the treatment landscape. The treatment has largely been steroids up until now, and that's even recent in the sense that that became standard of care only in the last decade or so. But now there are novel steroids like deflazacort and vomorolone. There are new treatments getting approved like the HDAC inhibitors. There are uh, ASO therapies as well. And now uh, there's a gene therapy that's available. So this explosion of therapies uh, hopefully means that the, the landscape and the trajectory of disease for patients with Duchenne will change drastically. So the wonderful thing about Elevitus and about gene therapy is that it's mutation agnostic, which means that it reaches a huge proportion of the patients with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Unlike the exon skipping therapies in which only certain mutations are amenable, really any mutation can respond to gene therapy. And the way that this works is there's a, a virus that we inject into the intravenous system. And that virus is like an envelope and it carries a small fragment of DNA and if you will, an on off switch that we call a promoter. That virus uh, finds the target muscle cells, in this case, skeletal muscle, diaphragm muscle, and cardiac muscle, and it delivers that package of DNA into the muscle. The on-off switch then tells the cells, if you are a muscle cell, you should turn on and you should transcribe this DNA. And that DNA then creates a protein, which is a shortened engineered form of dystrophin that keeps all of the functional parts of dystrophin most important uh, to the body. And so a patient who has had a gene transfer therapy such as Elevitus makes this shortened dystrophin protein that stabilizes the membrane and helps reduce contraction induced injury, thereby preserving muscle health and muscle function and changing the trajectory of the disease. The Embark study was our phase three study. Uh, this was a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled study of 126 patients globally who have Duchenne. They were four to seven years old at the time that they were enrolled. And because it's a double-blind, placebo-controlled study, half of the patients received the gene therapy at the beginning of the study. Everyone was followed for one year. And then the half who received placebo were able to receive the gene therapy after the first year. And we followed everyone again for another year. So the data coming out of the primary endpoint from Embark, which is that first year in which half the patients received placebo and half the patients received gene therapy, they showed excellent treatment benefit, especially when considering the secondary outcome measures. It is unfortunate that the North Star Ambulatory Assessment, which was our primary outcome measure, was not significant at 52 weeks. 
but it's extremely important to note that essentially all of the functional secondary outcome measures, which included a number of different timed function tests, such as time to rise from the floor and time to walk or run 10 meters, were all significant and showed benefit in the treated patients as compared to the placebo patients. Not only is there functional data from Embark, we also have imaging data. We're really excited that at the World Muscle Society, we were able to present MRI data. This was both musculoskeletal and cardiac MRI data. And the musculoskeletal MRI data really underscores the change in muscle biology and muscle health that was evident in the timed function tests coming from Embark. The cardiac MRI really underscores the safety of this treatment. There were no adverse effects on the heart one year after treatment. And we look forward to doing serial MRIs and reporting data in the future that continues to build on those results. I think I would also want to underscore that in addition to the Embark data that we showed, we also showed some data demonstrating the dystrophin levels from a wide range of different patients from our phase one endeavor study. These patients were from age three to age 20. They were as low as 12.5 kilos in weight all the way up through 80 kilos. They were non-ambulant and ambulant, and it shows the consistency of the biologic effect and the dystrophin that a levitus results in after treatment. So that data was also really exciting and I think really relevant to this idea of the many populations that are starting to be uh, that are starting to be able to access a levitus as a treatment. We're very excited that based on the results of Embark, the FDA did convert our accelerated approval that was in four and five-year-olds to a traditional approval for all ambulant patients over the age of four. They also granted us an accelerated approval for non-ambulant patients with Duchenne. So what's next is running our confirmatory trial already well underway uh, to confirm the benefit in non-ambulant patients. That trial is called Envision, and it's enrolling outside of the U.S. as U.S. enrollment is complete for that trial. We're also working on bringing Elevitus to even more populations, whether it's very young patients, patients with antibodies against the vector. We're really working to expand the population even further. We recognize that there are a number of options in the Duchenne treatment landscape, and that's really exciting and wonderful for patients. But I would say that treatments that address the underlying cause of disease are really important because only by addressing the underlying mechanism of disease can you hope to have really lasting maximal impact. And so a levitus is an example of a treatment that addresses the root cause of the disease. And so I would ask that, can, that clinicians consider whether that would be a strong cornerstone to their entire treatment regimen.